Hi, this is Jason at Navrock Marine Electronics in Rockland, Maine. It's a beautiful snowy day here, so customers are not visiting. So I'm going to take my mask off for a moment and talk to you about DFF3D. DFF3D is a system from Furuno for recording a 120 degree swath under the boat. Most sounders record a tiny little cone under the boat, one data point at a time. If this is your boat in the water, there's the sounder recording what's under it. And it records every second or so as your boat moves around. It makes sort of a trail on your chart. It fills in the data uh, to help you map the bottom better. Uh, people have been doing this for about 10 years now with Max C and Noble Tech and Time Zero and Olex and things like that. Uh, about three years ago, Ferrano came out with DFF3D, and that records a 120 degree beam under the boat. Um, and not just a wide beam, but it, data points all along the bottom. So you could easily record, say, 50 times as much data all at once compared to uh, recording it with a single beam from a single beam sounder. Uh, this is a big deal. You can map the bottom very quickly. Uh, we've got customers who have been using a computer to map the bottom for maybe 10 years now and they've got some really nice data. But with the DFF3D you could record that data very quickly. Uh, you could gain an advantage very quickly at understanding the bottom for lobster and other ground habitat. Uh, the DFF3D starts with a special transducer right here. This is a transducer and a motion sensor. Uh, if your boat is moving around, um, that beam under the boat is moving around. Um, so the motion sensing portion is very important. It uses a fairing block and this can be the fairing block and transducer can be installed by any competent boat yard. That's not something we do. We don't drill holes in the hull of your boat. I'll let the professionals who build boats do that work. Um, one of the things you have to figure out is where to put it on the bottom of your boat. This one doesn't have a keel so I won't show you with that. I've made some quality artwork here showing a boat with a keel. We want it in if 120 degrees total that means 60 degrees from straight down to the side. And we need to put it somewhere where um, the keel is not going to interfere with that 60 degree um, shape of the beam. Um, fortunately most boats these days are wide enough that there's a place on the hull where you can do this. Um, this could be installed in the keel if you want to, uh, but that's very difficult. Um, and it makes grounding out of the boat difficult too. Uh, you want to put it where the water doesn't, um, there's not a lot of bubbles uh, or interference. Using a fairing block doesn't slow down the boat. Um, so we're just going to pick a good spot on the bottom where it's got a good view on either side of it, 60 degrees on either side of the transducer. One of the other things to mention is how deep does this go? With a regular sounder you can use 50 kilohertz and you can go very, very deep. You can go a couple hundred fathom, no problem with it. Furno says it's about a thousand feet, other people say it's about 130 fathoms. Um, I'm not sure if they mean straight down or if they mean off to the side. So it's got to be able to measure that distance off to the So just for being conservative, I'm going to try to sell it for uses where it's 100 fathom or less straight down. Um, so uh, if you go way offshore um, and need way deeper depth than that, that's what the WASP is for. The WASP is a bigger, more powerful transducer and it costs several times more than this. It's a big budget product. But this is a really good deal for um, you know those medium depths and shallow depths. And also if you're recording a thousand feet down you're recording at least 1,700 feet this way, 1,700 feet that way. So you're recording, um, the deeper you go, the wider a swath you're recording. In very shallow water, like, you know, uh, close to shore somewhere, you know, say 20 feet of water, you're going to be recording about 30 feet wide across.
across the bottom. But it's going to be really detailed, very detailed data. Uh, so, uh, but as you go out into deeper water, you're going to be recording a wider part of the ocean bottom. Uh, and that will blend together just like it always has in time zero to give you more detail. As I mentioned, this has a motion sensor in it to help correct the motion of the boat while you're recording. And you also need some sort of heading sensor. Um, and this satellite compass, the SCX-20, for those SCX-20 and 21 are about, the third of the, about a third of the cost of their traditional satellite compasses. You need a Furuno one with time zero to do this. Um, these are only a little over a thousand dollars. It provides motion uh, detection just like the transducer does and it helps record a quality picture of the bottom and it also records uh, the heading which is important. If your boat is turning left and right you're recording different parts on the bottom so you need really good heading data um, and the satellite compass will do that. There's two different satellite compasses, the SCX-20, which is NMEA-2000, and the SCX-21, which is 0183. If you use the 0183 version, you can use this opto-isolator cable, hook it up to the computer, and you just put, and it's very simple. If you use the NMEA-2000 version, you can use it with your autopilot if you have one, or we can set up a separate NMEA-2000 network uh, for the uh, satellite compass and this uh, Actisense NGT1 USB adapter which puts your NMEA 2000 data onto your computer. The transducer connects up to the DFF 3D black box. This is installed down forward somewhere in your boat and it requires our professional installation. On the bottom we got ground, we have a network cable that goes to the computer for the high speed data, power, motion sensor, and the transducer which is hardwired inside. This is kind of the brains of the DFF 3D system. The computer connects your DFF 3D black box in the Fruno network jack on the back. Uh, and with the satellite compass using either the NMEA 2000 USB adapter or the Actisense serial adapter. And um, in, you'd use Time Zero Professional PBG with a DFF 3D module. The DFF 3D module adds $1,000 to the cost of the system and it shows extra things in Time Zero. It lets you record the multi-beam data so you can record a lot of data a lot quicker and uh, it also shows a, a three-beam sounder view so you can see your sounder on your computer screen. It's kind of nice to have a you know, 17 or 22 inch computer screen with a sounder or a picture on it. Uh, it shows single beam or three beam sounder so you can see what's under the boat and off to the left or right. Uh, this is helpful for finding schools of fish if you go over fish or you go over something on the bottom, you can see where it is with respect to the boat, whether it's left or right or directly under it. Uh, if the left beam has a stronger signal, it will show you know, the item more strongly on the left side. Uh, it also shows a 3D view of fish and bottom under the boat, a live view, not recorded. And if you're actually fishing for fish, I don't see how the fish could escape something like this. Uh, so that would be great for tuna fishing or something like that. Uh, it uses 165 kilohertz, which um, will show fish very well. Uh, if you use, you can also add, in addition to Time Zero, you can use it with a TZ Touch Furuno multifunction display like the TZ Touch 2 or TZ Touch 3. Those do not record it and they do not show the recorded data. So they're not so great for that respect. But if you wanted a you know, high quality, high brightness, outdoor display for showing the sounder picture. Uh, we could add that to the network and that would be pretty easy. Um, or if you want to see the live view of the 3D picture under the boat, um, that would be pretty easy with a TZ Touch. Or you could just add an extra screen to your Time Zero setup. But a lot of customers who have installed this have a second screen on their computer, which they use 
one screen over here for their uh, fishing view, and another screen for their sounder view, um, or the 3D live view. Um, so it adds a lot of data to Time Zero, makes it a lot more useful for our fishermen. Uh, if you want to estimate for this, give us a call or send us a message on Facebook. We can look up what you've got and what you need to add and figure out how to do this for you. Uh, it's a great way to have an advantage of understanding the habitat of the lobsters or whatever you're fishing for on the bottom of the ocean.